the parade of the Korean People's Army. The Korean People's Army is winning only victories under the banner of Sunbyun. Leader Kim Jong-il, the supreme commander of the Korean People's Army, advances the cause of socialism victoriously with Sungun politics. The history of the Korean People's Army spanning over 70 years was one of Sungun revolution. On February 8, 1948, Pyongyang witnessed a parade of the Korean People's Army, which was developed and strengthened into regular armed force. The first regular armed force of Korea was built into a People's Army with the fighters, where it fought for the liberation and independence of the country as its backbone. President Kim Il-sung founded the anti-Japanese People's Guerrilla Army on April 25, 1932. <music> Having penetrated deep into the fact that the revolution is secured by a rifle and the army guarantees the destiny of the fellow countrymen, President Kim Il-sung formed the Revolutionary Armed Force of Korea with two pistols handed down from his father as an asset. The Korean people, who were deprived of their country by the Japanese imperialists and forced to the destiny of slaves, warmly welcomed the founding of their army. Following Commander Kim Il-sung who said, Weapons are our life and soul. The sons and daughters of Korea defeated the Japanese imperialists and liberated the country. In liberated Korea, the army was developed and strengthened into a regular army, with the result that a strong military basis for building a sovereign and independent state was laid. The powerful aspect of the Korean People's Army shows the precious truth that the destiny of the nation depends on weapons. As they had their own army, the life of the people had always been overflowed with happiness.
In order not to become a ruined nation again, the army men acquainted themselves with military technology in a short time. On August 15th, 1949, a parade of the three services of the Korean People's Army was solemnly held in Pyongyang in celebration of the fourth anniversary of national liberation. The parade clearly demonstrated the vitality of the intelligible idea of giving importance to military affairs. During the period of building a regular army, President Kim Il-sung taught that a revolutionary army should defeat the enemy's numerical and technical superiority with a political and ideological, strategic and tactical superiority, and that the army building should be pushed ahead within in our own way. <laughs> The cheers echoing over the sky of Pyongyang, the heroic city which celebrated a victory in the war, continued ceaselessly. That day, the hero column in which our cameras attended had advanced at the head of the parade. At that time, passing by the platform, we shouted her at the top of our voices, looking up to the respected Supreme Commander Kim Il-sung. The respected Supreme Commander, with a broad smile on his face, congratulated us on the victory in the war. During the past Fatherland Liberation War against the U.S. imperialists' armed invasion, the Korean People's Army fought heroically. When the last bullets and grenades ran out, soldiers of the People's Army dashed into enemy positions, becoming Sherman bombs and shells. They had a firm faith that, led by the Supreme Commander Kim Il-sung, they were sure to win in the war. In April 1952, when the war was at its height, a fourth exhibition was held at the underground theater in Pyongyang to celebrate the 40th birthday of President Kim Il-sung. The exhibition showed the absolute and immutable faith of the army and people of Korea that trusted in and followed only their leader.
The victory of the young Korean People's Army and the defeat of the U.S. imperialists who boasted of being the strongest in the world. This miraculous event was a brilliant victory of the idea attaching great importance to arms, the idea that the destiny of the country and people is decided by arms. The army and people of Korea who defeated the U.S. imperialists had a grand parade to celebrate the victory in the war in the presence of President Kim Il-sung. U.S. imperialists mobilized the Korean front, the huge armed forces, more than 2 million strong, including the troops of South Korea, Japan, and other 15 satellite countries, and lost more than 1,567,000 men, including over 405,000 U.S. imperialist aggressors. The crack divisions of the Korean People's Army drove out beyond the Pacific Ocean the warlike generals of the U.S. who pounced upon us with a murderous spirit, giving them the names of defeated generals and grave generals. The U.S. imperialists were too ignorant of the Korean People's Army, the strong army of ideology and faith. The exploits performed by the men and officers of the People's Army who ensured the advance of the country will shine forever in the history of Korea. Heroes of the front and the people in the rear hugged fondly. The soldiers of the Korean People's Army defended a dear fatherland, their native towns and parents and brothers at the cost of their lives. The children whom the mothers of Korea sent to the front were the fine heroes of the country. The parade march to celebrate the victory in the war held that day has been firmly succeeded to the victorious path of the Sungun Revolution with a lapse of time. Army always stood at the head of the difficult post-war rehabilitation and construction too. Korea was proudly rising from the debris of war. Since the victory day, the shouts of long live our people's army and long live our leader had rang out over and over in Korea. In the middle part of the 1950s, the men and officers of the Korean People's Army guaranteed a triumphant social system with arms under the slogan of faith. Let us defend the party central committee headed by comrade Kim Il-sung at the risk of our lives. In the 1960s, the U.S. imperialists provoked a Caribbean crisis and the Backbrook Gulf incident. President Kim Il-sung put the greatest efforts to strengthening the People's Army and carried out simultaneously economic construction and defense building. He put forward a policy of turning the entire army into an army of cattle and modernizing the whole army 
and brought up the revolutionary armed forces of Korea with members equal a hundred fourths each. Leader, just give us your order. On January the 23rd, 1968, the U.S. imperialists infiltrated their armed spy ship Pueblo deep into the territorial waters of Korea. The Navy of the Korean People's Army, who were defending the coasts of the country impregnably, captured a spy ship only in 14 minutes. The U.S. imperialists who suffered a terrible blow before the world people shipped huge aggressive armed forces into the Korean Peninsula, clamoring about a so-called retaliation. We retaliate for the retaliation. Return all-out war for all-out war. The answer of Korea, led by President Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il, the young general in his twenties, was always firm. The whole country rose as one, holding a rifle in one hand and a hammer and sickle in the other. The U.S. imperialists went down on their knees again before the independent army and people of Korea rallied behind their leaders and signed the instrument of surrender. The U.S. imperialists, who boasted of having been victorious in the wars historically, are being kicked out of Korea again. A grand military parade to celebrate the 40th birthday of the Korean People's Army was held on April the 25th, 1972. It is the disposition of the Korean People's Army to give measure for measure. The people of the world will see more clearly the might of the Korean People's Army that once determined, it will do and win at any cost. Let us ourselves undertake both national defense and socialist construction. This is the slogan of the Korean People's Army. It is a firm determination of Kim Jong Il to completely change the looks of the whole society with the People's Army as a model. The soldiers of the Korean People's Army have opened up a breakthrough of socialist construction with a spirit of carrying through at the risk of their lives and a revolutionary spirit of soldiers. Kim Jong Il stoutly succeeds to the lineage of rifle of Korea.
On December 24, 1991, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Korea appointed Kim Jong-il the Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army. The military parade to celebrate the 60th birthday of the Korean People's Army was held for the first time after having Kim Jong-il as the Supreme Commander. The parade ground is overflowed with a blessing given by Kim Jong-il. Glory to the officers and men of the heroic Korean People's Army! The column of the anti-Japanese fighters who fought under the guidance of President Kim Il-sung marches at the head of the parade. The Korean People's Army keeps at its faith the truth of history that if rifle gets rusty, the people will become slaves and both the party and the revolution go down. For the safety of their leader, the Korean people's armed men check the enemy's billets with their bodies and overcome the danger encountered with suicide explosion. Foreign friends were struck with admiration, they said. The Supreme Commander Kim Jong-il who ensured that a safety line parade was held on the basis of the independent national defense industry regarding military affairs as the most important of the state affairs is a gifted brilliant commander. In July 1994, Kim Jong-il said that he felt lonely at the loss of the leader but he had the army built by the leader and declared solemnly that he would do all work trusting in the army and relying on it. In order to frustrate the vicious attempts of the U.S. imperialists to isolate and stifle Korea and defend socialism, Kim Jong-il visited a grim forefront. At the history crossroads of rifle or rice, Kim Jong-il firmly grasped the rifle and carried out Sungan politics in an all-round way. Sungun meant a life and soul to the people and death to the enemy. The army and people of Korea came out in the decisive struggle to defend socialism. The invincible crack units fought single-handed against the desperate imperialists. Even in the face of food difficulty, the Korean people valued billets more than sweets.
In the unprecedented hardships and trials, a complete whole is formed more firmly between the supreme commander and soldiers, between the army and people. This is precisely the strength of Chuche career, the might of Sungan politics. The ranks of the victors who defended socialism with rifles and the parade ground. The supreme commander of the Korean People's Army, Kim Jong Il, who has won great victory of Sundan politics. The army and people are offering the greatest glory to Kim Jong Il, who has defended the destiny of the country and nation with a precious sword of Sungan politics. It is the outstanding feat of Kim Jong Il that he regarded the People's Army as the main force for the completion of socialist cause and made Korea a strong military country. The military parade of Korea, the military parade of Sungun, demonstrating the complete whole of the leader and army. No one can check the advance of the Korean People's Army, which keeps the supreme commander's first idea as its faith. The stand of the Korean People's Army against the imperialist vassals is firm, and the rifle of Korea forged by Sungun is merciless. If the U.S. imperialists and their followers dare pounce upon us, the armed forces of Korea will wipe them out at one sweep. Long live the great victory of Sungan politics. Yeah.